I call this meeting of the Onslow County Board of Education to order. Good evening and thank you for joining us today. I'd like to ask uh, Reverend Jack Marshman of Tarlanding <coughs> Baptist Church to come to the podium where he will deliver our invocation. Reverend, thank you for coming. Pray with me, please. Almighty God, maker of heaven and earth, we thank you this evening that in your creative genius, you gave us the capacity to, to learn, the ability to study and to comprehend that we might apply our lives and that the time we have would be meaningful and productive and beneficial, not only to ourselves, to our families, but to our fellow man. And Lord, it's to this board that the citizens of this county have entrusted a, a very sacred responsibility, and that is the educating of our children, of our youth. It is a daunting task. It is beyond their ability. And I pray for them. I pray for all who work with them as they lead in this great challenge of raising up the next generation. I pray that you'll bless them we pray that our children, the students that walk into the halls of all these schools, might ever learn what is true so that mentally they will be sharp, what is good, that morally they might be strong. We pray for all who work in our school system. We pray for our students, for it is a day that we must ever pray for their well-being, for their safety. We ask you to watch over them keep them well. Bless the deliberations of this very evening and any decisions that must be made. May they be good choices. May it be helpful. And so, Lord, we offer to you our service, and we pray that you'll be honored and glorified. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Will you stand and face the flag and join me in the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First item of business is to approve the agenda. I'd entertain a motion to approve the agenda as presented. Motion made. Second. A motion and a second. Any comments or discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Next, approval of the consent agenda. You see there are about eight, eight thing, eight, seven or eight things under there. I have a motion to approve the consent agenda. Moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Next is the Good News Spotlight. We always really enjoy this because it highlights wonderful things that are going on throughout our school system. So at this time, I'd like to call our Chief of Communications, Beth Folger, to begin our recognition. Doctor, I'm sorry I didn't give you a title. You know, I'll go by whatever you call me these days. <laughs> so Madam Chair, board members, Mr. Stout, good evening. I'm very excited that I get to um, share the Good News Spotlight this evening and super excited that we have families here and students that we're lifting up and recognizing um, for our public. They, these are the students that really tell our stories in our school district. So um, first I would like to um, talk about or share with you the highlight of two Swansboro High School, school students, Grace Frazier and Alexandria Chadwick, who are among the elite group of students chosen to receive a scholarship to attend the Francis Hesselbang State Student Leadership Program offered at the United States Military Academy at West Point. It was offered last fall. So Grace and Alexander, will you please come forward with your principal, Ms. Chris Andre? Come over here so we can all see you. So established by the Military Child Education Coalition in 2006, the five-day program focuses on leadership, 
character development, team building, goal setting, resilience, community involvement, and leaders in action, and helps students develop the skills to apply when they're, while they're learning. Through personal small group exercises led by the MCEC and Academy faculty and cadets, the students gain confidence, competence, and commitment to return to their campuses ready to share with fellow students, to be leaders themselves. No more than 24 sophomores and juniors active in their local student-to-student -student programs are chosen to participate each year. Full tuition was included, including transportation, lodging, meals, program materials, et cetera, and an opportunity for a lifetime these youngsters have had. Um, having two of our students selected in Onslow County Schools has never happened before. So the program was named for Francis Hesselbein, and I hope I'm saying that right. Hesselbein, I had a 50-50 chance. Hesselbein, in recognition of her dedication to the development of children and youth. Hesselbein is the chairman of the Board of Governors of the Leader to Leader Institute. Many of us have heard of that. And she's the former CEO of the Girl Scouts of America. She was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom, the United States' highest civilian honor in 98, and in 2002, she was the first recipient of the Eisenhower National Security Series Award for her service with the U.S. Army. So ladies, we definitely congratulate you on your achievements. I know, Ms. Andre, you're so proud to have two of these students at your school, and I think we would be remiss if we didn't recognize um, the parents, too, and, and recognize Mr. and Ms. Frazier and Mr. and Ms. Chadwick, who are here this evening, if you could just stand. Thank you. Next, I'd like to recognize Carrie Dean, who's now a freshman at Dixon High School and who was awarded third place at the national level of Modern Woodman of America's 2015 School Speech Contest. And she's the daughter of Mr. and Ms. Um, John Huber, if they're in the, and they, I believe they are here, so if we could recognize them for the fine role that they've played in their daughter's life as well. Carrie, if you and the teachers who helped you with your speech, Ms. Edwards, Ms. Brown, and also Dixon Middle School Principal, Ms. Lee Bazell, and Joe Adcock from Woodman of America, please come up. You see, we really do believe it takes a village to raise a child. <laughs> a lot of support for our students. So the, the um, topic for the contest was an interesting landmark. Students could choose to describe the landmarks, history, location, physical characteristics, or impact on individuals and communities. From my understanding, Carrie chose the John F. Kennedy Eternal Flame, and she delivered her speech in a unique way. She spoke as if she were the flame itself, noting the importance of the flame and the man whose grave it memorializes. In her speech, she said, I will burn forever on, launching not missiles, but hope, dedication, and passion to the people of your nation. I am burning to prove that even though the man is gone, the hope he gave you isn't. Ms. Adcock, if you will please present the plaques. This is for you, my lady. Thank you. And I would just like to add that Ms. Carrie Dean one third place out of 90,000 participants across the United States. So that's a huge, huge accomplishment. Yeah. And we'd also like to thank um, Dixon Middle School for their participation. Onslow County Schools has been participating in this um, school speech contest for over 15 years. They always send someone to nationals. So these ladies here do a phenomenal job with the kids. They bring them in, um, when I've emceed some of these contests, they bring them in at the fourth grade level to give them an idea of what to expect in the fifth grade through eighth grade levels. So they do a local um, contest, they do a state contest, and then they do a national contest. And in addition to um, Carrie's plaque, she gets a $1,000 um, 
savings plan to be to start her education, her formal education after secondary. So thank you for your participation in this and support your school. I appreciate it. Oh, pictures, I'm sorry. <laughs> While they're having their picture taken, I would like to also note a special thanks to um, Joanne Adcock, who has sponsored the local contest for Woodman of America. So thank you for thank your you. partnership with the school district. I appreciate it. Well, I've been here less than two months, and there's one thing I've learned. And I've learned that we have a certain member of our executive staff or our cabinet that tends to get lots of awards. So we're going to continue that tradition tonight. And I'd like to invite our chief financial officer, Mr. Holloman, to join me and Mr. Stow at the podium. <coughs> Thank you. So I am proud to announce that Onslow County Schools has recently received two distinguished recognitions for financial management for the fiscal year 2014. The first award is the Certificate of Excellence in Financial Reporting presented by the Association of School Business Officials. It is the highest recognition for school district financial <coughs> operations. We would expect no less from you, Mr. Holloman. This program reviews district accounting practices as represented by the comprehensive annual financial report, and it commends school districts that adhere to sound principles and reporting procedures. A district earning the Certificate of Excellence has demonstrated its credibility in financial management for the school system. So congratulations on this first <coughs> award. I think this one's made of pure gold. <laughs> the second award is the Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting presented by the Government Finance Officers Association. This award is the highest form of recognition in the area of governmental accounting and financial reporting. We would expect no different from you, Mr. Holloman. <laughs> it represents a significant accomplishment by government and its management. Now here, hold on to your seats. This is the 12th consecutive year that the Onslow County Board of Education and Mr. Holloman has earned these two prestigious awards. I'd like to commend Mr. Holloman and his dedicated staff for their continued outstanding management of our financial resources. A big round of applause. Thank you, Dr. Folger. Now I'll ask Dr. Eason, our Associate Superintendent of Instructional Services, to present the scholarship report. Good evening, Madam Chair, members of the board, Mr. Stout. If you will take a look at your good news report for this evening, um, I would like to call your attention to the high school scholarship report. Included in that report, you will see data that ranges from the 2012-2013 um, school year all the way up to last school year with our total scholarship amounts for the 2014-2015 school year. Just a couple of highlights um, from from that scholarship scoreboard. The first thing that I would like to share with you is as you look at our trend data in terms of scholarships over the last three years, what you will see with five of our seven high schools is a steady increase every year from 2012 to 2013 to 2014-15. The second thing that I would like to share with you from our scholarship data is that some of the um, scholarship dollar amounts from some of our high schools, when you look at it across a three-year um, trajectory, really is most impressive. I'd like to share with you that in 2012-13, Jacksonville High School's graduating seniors um, totaled scholarship winnings of $781,513. In 2014-15, that number at Jacksonville High School was all the way up to $2,746,000. 
I'd also like to call your attention to Dixon High School. In 2012-2013, those seniors received $807,900. And if you'll look at the 14-15 total, you will see that Dixon High School for last year was at $2,717,732. Um, and last but not least, I will also call your attention to Dixon High School for last year. Um, in the 12-13 school year, I'm sorry, why? Oak High School. Um, in 12-13, they were right at a million dollars with 998,925. And in the 14-15 school year, White Oak High School students received $2,793,700. So as you can see, when you look cumulatively across our school system, we have seen our students in the last three years double their scholarship earnings. 12-13, the Onslow County School System graduating seniors had over, just over $6 million. And during 2014-15, our graduating seniors, the class of 2015, had as a district $13,176,784. I would be remiss if I did not give special recognition to all of our high school staffs, to all of our administrators at the high school level, to all of our school counselors, and most importantly this evening, if we happen to have any of our graduates from 2015 out in um, TV land, I hope they have had a great beginning to their freshman year in college, and we just want them to know that the Onslow County School System is very, very proud. So thank you for the opportunity, and Madam Chair, that is our good news for this evening. Thank you. That's wonderful, wonderful. I know those parents are appreciative, too, of that extra money that's coming in to help with that education. Do any of the board have uh, any comments they'd like to make during the Good News Spotlight? School's getting started, and we have football season and bands and all types of things going on, soccer, volleyball. So I know that there are a lot of uh, opportunities for you to join our schools and see some <coughs> exciting things. And we will be reporting more as we continue our meetings during this coming year. We do not have anyone who signed up for the public comment session. And if you're here just for the Good News Spotlight and you would like to leave, this would be a good time for you to make your departure. We'd love for you to stay. We could be quite entertaining. But we understand that uh, you might have other things on your plate for this evening. Thank you for coming. Homework. Thank you. The next item on our agenda is there's a vacancy on the North Carolina School Board Association's Board of Directors and every board member received a letter concerning that. At this time, um, only one member of our board has expressed any a real interest in it and has the time to devote to attending that. So I would like to suggest that to the board and request that someone put forward a motion to accept, uh, to nominate Mr. Earl Taylor for this position. He's indicated that he has the time, the energy, and he certainly does have the skills that would carry forth between this board and the school board association. Madam okay. Chair, I make a nomination that Mr. Taylor be uh, identified as filling that vacancy to the North Carolina School Board Association Board of Directors. We have a motion. Is second. there a second? We have a motion and a second. Any comments that anyone would like to make? Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? And congratulations, Mr. Taylor. Thank you. And we'll let you know if you don't do a good job. I'm sure you will. <laughs> <laughs> the next is the resolution for the Dixon Middle School funding. I asked uh, Steve Myers, our uh, Chief of Operations, to come forward. And also would like to recognize that we have uh, with us the county uh, attorney, uh, Ms. Moxley, as well as the uh, finance director, David McCool. David McCool. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman, members of the board, Mr. Stout. Onslow County local government has requested that the Board of Education consider a resolution approving an agreement concerning Dixon Middle School, approving certain other documents and actions relating thereto and authorizing certain actions in connection therewith. This resolution and other documents, which include an agreement concerning Dixon Middle School and a lease agreement, 
are forms and proceedings recommended by the county's 2015 local obligation bond attorneys in order to obtain the necessary funding for the new Dixon Middle School. Included in your packet is, is the resolution that uh, I mentioned, and if the board desires, I'll read it into the record. Does anyone on the board need for him to read that? No. Anyone? Okay. Yeah, we're fine. And as Ms. Thomas also mentioned, uh, the county attorney, Ms. Moxley, and the county chief financial officer, Mr. McColl, are also present to answer any questions that you may have. So at this time, staff would ask that the board consider a motion to approve the resolution, approving an agreement concerning Dixon Middle School, approving certain other documents and actions relating thereto, and authorizing certain actions in connection therewith as presented. Since we'd like to have some discussion on this, I would ask that we have a motion first uh, to accept the resolution, to entertain it. I make a motion to accept the resolution. Okay. Second. Is there a, second. There's a second. Okay, now the floor is open for any discussion. Yes, Madam Chair, I have a few questions I'd like to ask. And uh, it may be that we need to bring up uh, the county attorney or the county finance director to answer those, but let me ask you first. Okay. The agreement basically is going to be a financing agreement for three pieces of new construction or new projects. Is that correct? I believe that. So um, if, if you don't mind, I'd like to ask uh, Mr. McColl up here to, to verify the, the answers that I may give. Um, three projects? Yes. Yes, good evening, board. It's three projects that we'll be okay, financing. Well, welcome to our <clears throat> meeting tonight. I appreciate you. you coming. The, the three projects uh, are going to be basically we're, we're going out for a bond. Is that correct? Yeah, limited obligation bond. And, and I believe uh, in earlier meetings at the uh, county mm -hmm. commissioner's meetings, uh, it was discussed it's going to be a $57 million bond. Is that correct? That was a not to exceed amount. A not to exceed a amount. Of, yes, we always put a little bit of a buffer in because we don't, you know, we have bit, we have projections, but until the bids come in, you really don't know how much you're going to need to finance. So, but, but the maximum amount of the bond that we're going out for is 100 million. Is that correct? Uh, no, we we've just been approved by the LGC. Actually, today, it's going to be between around a little bit over 52, between 52 and 53 million is what we're going to be borrowing for our financing. <clears throat> so. The, the agreement before us is $57 million, is it not? It, 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 again, keep in mind that's a not to exceed amount. Okay. So when we put that in there, again, we don't, we don't know. We have an idea how much it's going to cost from our architect, but until the bids come in, we really can't. You have to have that buffer because if bids could come in at, say, $56 million, then you would need that amount to borrow. So you give yourself a little bit of leeway and flexibility in case uh, things come in a little bit um, more than you expect from, a, okay. from the architectural perspective. And also, um, you know, we, you have the option to do re-engineering. So the board felt comfortable there not to exceed amount, our, our, our board, the county board, not to exceed amount of 57 million. And then we would have to do re-engineering from there if the bids came in higher than we expected. Like a good example is Dixon Middle School came in around, was it three million under, under, right. under bid? So, you know, we were able to borrow less because of that. <clears throat> Back in May, uh, the school board uh, had another issue that was in collaboration with the county commissioners with regards to refinancing uh, another bond uh, initiative, f and, and that was also about $100 million maximum at that time on a $36 million project. Is that correct? I no, we, we did two advanced refundings, um, and they, they, they involved school f they involved some financing that, that, that had some school financing projects involved with that. And we put so, up Meadowview uh, School, I believe, correct, as yes, collateral yes. for that. At and a savings of around, uh, present value savings was around $3.2 million. Uh, okay. Actual cash savings was around 4 and a half to $4.6 million. So bundling projects gets <clears throat> us a lower interest rate? Oh, most definitely, most definitely. The okay. more you can bundle, and, and, and it also saves money on the financing cost, too. Okay. If you had to go out to finance each of these projects separately, you, you would be, well, with three, well, the two, the two main projects are the Consolidated Human Services Building and the Dixon Middle School. The vehicle maintenance is a smaller amount. So if you were to do those two projects separately, you, you would be doubling your financing costs. And, and, and so from an economic standpoint, you're saving money on your financing costs. And by going to the market with a larger dollar amount, you, 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 you have a higher, a better opportunity to get a better interest rate. Okay, so the deal that we're discussing this evening, 
uh, has no connection with the deal that we discussed back in May. They're two oh, no. separate bond initiatives. The one that we talked with the advance, that was a, advanced exactly. refunding. Yes, exactly. we're looking the to, to, it's, to like, it's no different than like, say refinancing your house with the mortgage rates. It was a little, it's a little more complicated. Okay. <clears throat> well, the, the only concern I have here in these deals that we're doing currently is that we're refinancing your house or my house and building yours. Otherwise, when we put these projects together, our properties, the school district's properties, are the only ones that are going up as collateral. Well, you need to keep in mind, if we did do these separate, say if we did do them separate, we'd be paying again um, twice the financing cost. And then we'd also still have to put up Dixon Middle School as collateral because that would be a separate deal by itself. However, if we bundled more than one school project together, wouldn't we have the same financing agreement, the same advantages? same advantages if we bundled the Dixon and the Richlands together and, and I don't know that that's possible because I know that on uh, um, August 17th the, the Board of Commissioners agreed and I'm sure that uh, some people here uh, were in attendance of that meeting as well but during that process it was another financing agreement that was tentatively yes. approved there was a public hearing and we're going to build a new courthouse and we're going to build a new school out in Richlands and we probably need both of them we bundled those two projects together. Wouldn't it have been just as easy to bundle two schools and build two schools and then build all of the projects that you've got at the county level together and bundle those and submit them? Well, again, it's all timing, too, of, of when you're going to do the financing. Uh, the, the, uh, the board came to us saying they had a need to build Dixon Middle School with, with the time frame that was set, set forth by we it. But by we, have, we, have a, we have a need <clears throat> to build several schools. Yeah. But with the agreement that we have with the county, that's been prolonged out a period of time. There was a board agreement, I believe, a year and a half, almost two years ago, uh, between um, the two boards that we would set up a schedule. We would build schools on a particular scheduled time frame. And right. we appreciate the fact that we're able to move this one up. Yeah. I just have some concerns that the appearance is that our collateral, our properties are being used to finance the county projects. Well, I mean, I, I wouldn't see it in that light, to be quite honest with you, sir. I, res you know, I respect your opinion, but keep in mind, if we did do separate financings, um, we would be using Dixon Middle School a as collateral. Sure. So, you know, if we, if we want to do separate, we'd still we have to use it as collateral. And again, we'd be paying twice the cost for financing costs. There's also uh, you got, there's another thing that you have to keep in mind. One of the rating agencies requires you, or like this deal is going to roughly be between about 52 to $53 million. Moody's requires us to have at least, well, the collateral that we put up has to be at least 50% of the borrowing. Now the Consolidated Human Services building is going to be around 20.5 million, all said and done. So we wouldn't have enough collateral to be able to meet that, that, that criteria by Moody's. So that, that's why we're using uh, Dixon Mills. Let, let me no other address that, that issue for just a second, because the tax rate on the property that we're going to build Dixon Middle School Currently, the Onslow County tax rate mm -hmm. on that is about 600000 We purchased 10 acres for $800,000 back in 2007, and we were donated another 30 for a total of 40 acres, I believe, for a total price of $800,000. The current tax rate, because of the economy or the, the differences in the, uh, the <coughs> recent assessments that were out there, it's, it's valued about 600000 So I'm concerned how we're able to afford or how the bond company is going to give us money to build three projects worth $52 million on a property that's worth 600000 Well, no, they're going to take into account the value of the actual building. So, so the, the, actual, the actual, once we construct the building, the value of, of the land and the building is going to be valued at, at, at a heck of a lot more. So when you combine the land and the construction, that, that's what enables us to put that up for collateral and meet the 50% criteria as required by Moody's. The email that we got back from Bond Council today, or actually I believe it may have come <clears> in uh, Friday, or I'm not sure when it came in, may have come in today, uh, or yesterday I believe it actually was, was received there, basically said, and to answer my initial question, whether or not we we're going to use this bond for additional construction of schools or Onzo County, uh, additional projects, et cetera, et cetera, and was told that Basically, it could be, if we went up to the $100 million, it could be going up to that. Is that that's correct. But since the, who, who is it, the local government council? Local government commission. Local government commission has capped it at? Well, 
we, we went to them with the source, we do what is once we have all their bids in hand and all the permits are in place and we actually know what this is, what the, what the cost of the prop, what the cost of each project is going to be, then we actually come up with a, what I would say a hardcore number, sources and uses, and that, that's, that's what determines that, that 52 and a half, okay. it's around 52 to 53 million roughly, how once, once you add in premium and the financing side of it. So it, it's, that's what determines how much we're going to borrow. Okay. Um, in the end, you know, they're not going to want us to borrow obviously a hundred million when we only need, you know, 52 and a half million. So. All right. I understand that. Now going forward on the next project, I assume that the county will be coming back to us within the next few weeks on the finance uh, agreements and doing the documentation similar to what we're doing this evening for the project at Richlands. That, there'll be a, t a time schedule set up. It, I don't know exactly what what board meeting that will be done at in terms of getting the financing part of it. There, there's quite a ways of ways. I know that the planning on that and what we put in our debt capacity model to be able to pay for this was to go to the market, and, and this is all preliminary conversation right now because we're still a little ways off. Not that actually, before you know it, we'll be here, but probably July, go to the LGC, and then well, get approval on the LGC agenda in early August and then go to the market, market shortly thereafter, okay. factoring in the Richlands Elementary School along with the, with the courthouse. But again, this, we're still in the architectural planning phrases on, on, well, on some, a lot of it still. So once we get a hardcore, uh, an I, I believe cost, yesterday our architectural contracts <clears throat> were supposed to be in at 5 p.m., were they not? Yeah. That's right. All right. So, so, so going forward on to the <clears throat> Richlands project then, uh, are the county or is the county commissioners going to go with a similar deal that we've had for these last two with the Dixon Middle and the Metaview financing agreements that our property is going to be the sole property put up for that one as well? I, I can't speak for the board. My recommendation as, as a finance director would be to do this, follow along the same lines that we're doing with these projects, yes. Okay. And again, if you would just illuminate for me and the public out there to why we're only using Onzo Colony properties to do the entire projects. I mean, well, the county's got properties out there that are not encumbered. Is that correct? Uh, we, you got to keep in mind we've put quite an investment into our like our, our government center, our you know airport okay. terminal. We have quite a few new assets, but really we were very there was not much investment into the infrastructure from on the county side for quite a while. So a lot of the properties that have been built are brand new, and they've already used been used as collateral for 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 the deals to be able to get our financing in place. So really, if, if, if a place, if, if a property is already up, is being used for collateral, we can't go pluck that property and use it for collateral for another deal. So, so we really don't have much options other than, you know, with the, with the projects we have coming up. And vacant and, lots and properties uh, that have just parking lots on them are not, you can't put those, you don't get as much out of them as collateral unless you're going to build on them exactly. and build an infrastructure to build a tax base with it. Exactly. And again, it, 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 why we're doing it structured, and keep in mind, if we did them separate, it, yes, we could do them separate, but then we'd be using Richlands Elementary as collateral, and then we'd just do the courthouse separate. But again, it, just to emphasize, we'd be paying much more in financing cost and, and I can't speak for the LGC, but I know they would probably come to us and say, look, these deals are coming together at the same time. You really should bring them together under one umbrella. Uh, you know, that, that would be more than likely the recommendation. If they're going to be a month or two apart, like it, it appears right. they will be, they would more than likely, again, can't speak for them, but I, my experience with them in the past is they would want us to combine the deals just for the reasons I'm speaking to. Double, you're paying twice the financing cost and, and you're, you get more efficiency of scale, and when you go to the market with a larger deal, you're going to underwriters are lining up investors to buy your bonds, the, right. the, the county, the lobs. You have a little more negotiating power to be able to uh, maybe get a little bit better deal. On the uh, Meadowview uh, property that we did back in May, has that already gone to the local government commission as well? Well, that, that that's already been executed. The whole deal. That's the one where I was saying we had a a, a present value savings of around 3.2 million. What, what was the maximum savings. that ultimately was on that one? Then I mean, the original documentation, although we were only going for 36 million, had a max that we could go for is 100 million. Did we have to lower that threshold as well? We we didn't borrow. Like I said it wasn't 100 million that we borrowed. Um, no, I know that we didn't borrow that, but that's what the document said that we could go up to a maximum width. Um, again, without having documents in front of me, I, all, I, all I can allude to is we, we wouldn't want to borrow. 
you know, we're refinancing, so we're looking to get savings. So it, would, it wouldn't make sense to go out and borrow 100 million because you're not going to, because then you're going to be paying even more in interest. What we're looking to do it is just. It wouldn't make any sense except for, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no, that's fine. That's fine. If, if you went to 100 million, let's say they would loan us 100 million or we'd get bonds uh, rated at 100 million for that project, I think we've got about uh, 12 million in the <clears throat> Meadowview project with uh, what we've currently got, and I think we had 36 that we were going out for our maximum, at 36 at that particular time. <clears throat> but if we had that additional leeway in there, if they were going to loan us up to 100 million, that's what the original document said that we approved back in May 12th, mm -hmm. would we not then be able to draw upon additional projects from that document? I had to look at the documents because this was more looking at it from from a, a savings perspective, not not to build a project or, or or anything along those lines. So Does and the, and, they're, and, they're, and those deals are bundled together. You know, you have they're right. intertwined with some other financings that 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 were. You know, I have to go back and look at my my, my notes on that. But you got to keep in mind they're 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 bundled with other other financings that we did. We kind of brought the LOBS financing together mm -hmm. and a geo a geo refinancing too. There were two separate deals. But we were looking to get like the savings I was speaking to. It wasn't looking at it from a construction perspective. Sure. So now I, I might be talking outside of my, my, my scope in terms from a legal perspective, but you're combining these deals together and there's a lot of legal things are, the, with these three projects that we're doing, they're all interconnected in a sense. And, 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 and it makes more sense and it makes more practicality to, to just bring them together and have them separate from the, the uh, the documents that you're speaking to that were, I guess, back in May was. But the bottom line is about bundling, you're saving money. <clears throat> oh, yes, we are. We are. Gentlemen, I appreciate your conversation. I, I, I know that y'all having a, a real good one, and there's <laughs> going to always be time for that. But let's go back to the real item that's here. And uh, if there are any other questions about that, we need to <clears throat> ask those now. Any comments? No more for me. Thank you, David. Thanks. Good questions and good discussion. I'd just like to, to thank the county commissioners for taking another bold step in uh, moving the Richlands Elementary School forward. And I heard on during the meeting on August the 17th, as well as tonight, saving money for the taxpayer. And we're getting, we're placing two old schools as quickly as possible. So again, I applaud the county commissioners for their, uh, their, their, their vision and, and taking the bold step. But thank you thank very you, much. Thank you and your group for your work. And the county commissions for stepping it up. Yep. We're going to get it sooner than we expected. Exactly. Any other comments? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you. Thank uh, you. One thing I would like to mention, I know Mr. McColl uh, did mention that uh, LGC did, did give approval for the financing for the Dixon Middle School project going forward. Uh, what that means is Remember our last uh, set of meetings and stuff, we also awarded a bid to Clancy and Thay's construction to do the phase two of the Dixon Middle School project. It was contingent on the LGC approval. So with that approval, now we, we will be able to go forward with the project. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, Ms. Moxley and, and uh, Mr. McCool for coming. I appreciate it. Mr. Irwin, you're up next on some policies. Thank you, ma'am, Madam Chair, members of the board. There, there are two policies uh, before you this evening. The uh, new policy is the uh, uh, voter, student voter registration, and it was introduced at your last board meeting in August. And uh, it's a short policy. It just requires the principal to have uh, the registration applications for students so that they can register to vote. And uh, it's before you for your approval to uh, vote on tonight if you're so inclined. We have a motion that we uh, approve the policy regulation change. Moved. Second. Any discussion or comments? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Madam Chair, the next policy is the revisions to the graduation uh, requirements. It's policy 3460. And uh, Specifically, this policy changes the requirements for the uh, research project, the graduation project, to be five to seven pages as opposed to eight to ten. And so that is uh, uh, reflected here in this 
policy. And if the board is so inclined to uh, adopt this uh, amendment to this policy, this uh, eight to 10 pages is reflected in another policy, student progression and placement, that's policy 3420. So we would ask that if you approve this change, that you would also likewise uh, approve the technical change to policy 3420 so they will be consistent. So instead of it, the graduation project being from eight to 10 pages, it will be five to seven. And going on with the rest of the project, you'll see some strike throughs on page one and, and uh, then you'll see some additions on page two. The additional language in red uh, just indicates that the minimum requirements now in math uh, and uh, a second language is required for students attending the UNC system universities. And then the same language is struck through because it's placed within the course requirements uh, uh, above. And then on page uh, three, it's the same, uh, the same information provided about the math, the four math courses and the uh, two years of a second language. And then you'll see strike throughs at the bottom of page three and the, the entire page four and uh, part of page five. And that's because uh, those requirements were for students entering school uh, prior to 2009. So those students have already gone through our system and no longer subject to the course requirements. And so that policy, this policy would have no application for them. And um, as you continue on page six, there's another additional uh, mandate to the principal to make sure that students and parents are fully aware of the graduation requirements and that the principal should be aware also of transfer of students in determining uh, which courses will be given credit towards graduation. And the rest of the policy, uh, with the exception of uh, an additional graduation certificate on the very last page, um, the, uh, there is a global language endorsement as well as the career and college endorsement. And then there's an uh, addition with the uh, graduation certificate for those children in the exceptional children's program. So those are the technical changes and most importantly for those that do the research papers, the uh, mandate for the paper is five to seven as opposed to eight to 10. Make sure everybody knows that. <laughs> do we have a motion to approve the graduation requirement changes in policy 3460 as well as the technical changes for 3420 to align those two? So move, motion, second. I have a motion and a second. Any comments or questions? Yes, ma'am, I do. That's a page six of the local graduation requirements is the graduation project. That's something that we can determine here locally. As I've mentioned before, I'm very concerned that we're lowering our standards. Uh, the state required us to lower the grades uh, from a uh, down to a 10 point grading system. Uh, we're taking this upon ourselves to do this. Now, I've heard some people say that a five to seven page paper, if it's cogently written, is probably better than eight to 10 page. It's not. I, I agree with that. The problem that I have with this is that I think we're sending the wrong message. I think any senior graduating should be able to write eight to 10 pages. Eight to 10 pages is not excessive in my opinion for a research paper that they have several weeks, if not several months, to compile and put together. Now, I know it's uh, I'm probably not going to be real popular with all those out there to have to do that, but that's my opinion. I really believe that we shouldn't lower it down to a five to seven. We're almost cutting it in half. The maximum before was 10, now we're bringing it down to five. I just have a major objection to that. Other comments? I've had the opportunity to uh, participate in a, a number of presentations presented by the seniors uh, at many, many of the high schools. And I've read the, 
the papers, the term papers, and the research and so forth. Uh, I, personally, I do not see it as lowering the standard. I think the students need to learn how to write a paper and write it well and meet all the guidelines as we used to have to do back in high school days. But something about Shakespeare back in when I was in 11th grade just didn't really turn me on. However, I still read the, the paper. Sorry, Ms. Eason, but uh, <laughs> I know you're an English teacher. But picking a topic that really, that I was able to connect to and also write a paper, meeting all the guidelines and expectations and all the rules and so forth. I think the students will continue to do a good job, but it's that research and benef benefiting from that research and the presentation itself. It's all part of a package, and the paper is just an important part of it, and I hope the students will understand that because when they get out of high school, guess what? It's writing, writing, and writing. So as in, it's very important that they learn those skills now along with the presentations and, and all the research. So um, um, I understand Mr. Williams' concern there, but um, I, I Totally, certainly support th these changes. I, I, think what, I think what you're going to find, and I was a math guy, but uh, although that, that is a minimum, and you're going to find that most seniors can't say what they need to say in five pages, guys. So you, it's going to continue to be seven, eight, nine pages or more. I just don't see them being able to be so concise with five. The page number doesn't bother me. I think they're going to be fine, and seniors are going to continue to go well over that number. I, I also agree with what Mr. Williams has brought forward. Uh, I can understand his point of view as well. And having been, uh, as Mr. Taylor has indicated, one of those who judge the senior projects, and also having been a guardian who's had to motivate <laughs> the student Right. to be proactive in getting started on that graduation project uh, and the amount of assistance that was received uh, after school hours by faculty and staff to make sure the citations and everything was done correctly uh, with his or her project. I, I think that we still will find that we will produce quality students and they will still be right. successful in their writings. Uh, so, you know, I, I understand everybody's concern, but I do believe that we're still going to succeed. Uh, uh, to be successful in this. Any other questions? And as far comments? as all the other changes, that's pretty much state, mm -hmm. state mandated. Yeah. If there are no other comments, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? No. This leads us to the second public comment session. This is a time that anyone may speak on anything that is under the control of the board. Is there anyone who would like to address the board? Yes. Regarding the content of the number of pages, that a senior who has to do this. Uh, would you mind coming to the podium, please? And uh, normally, we, we, you do have to sign up ahead of time. And I'm going to make an executive decision and, and let you speak because uh, we, we should have done that. Thank you. We don't have a big audience. Um, I had a senior who was responsible to do a senior project. And he complained about the number of pages that he had to write on his project. And because he had to do so many, he had to go back there and do more research. And through that, he got a well-rounded project. So I appreciate it. And I was right there with him because I'm an English major. And I was right there with him helping. And it made him go back and do more work. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Any others? I ask for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? I expect Mr. Wiggins to say no <laughs> sometime because he, he tries to do that. We're just having such a good time. So. This meeting is adjourned. You have a great evening. Thank you for coming and be safe.